Today, the Fish and Ships players present Spock Pacific, a musical comedy by Rodgers and Hammerstein and Ted and Alice. <laughs> Despite a number of creative inducements, details of which will not be revealed, the original cast of Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, will not be recreating their roles today. <laughs> I see we have a mixed reaction. So, to complicate the matters, we are casting a variety of fans in these familiar roles. Not all of these roles are being played by people. Excuse me, not all of these roles are... <laughs> That's the way Scott Card delivered the line, I was told you will deliver it that way. <laughs> Not all of the roles are being, being played by people of the same sex as the original characters, so we think some introductions are in order. First, and of course foremost, Admiral James T. Kirk. I read... I read from the official Starfleet biography. Five feet ten inches tall, brown hair, hazel eyes, cute little bun. <laughs> Highly intelligent, armed, and extremely dangerous. <laughs> Wanted for sabotage, insubordination, trespassing, theft of government property, and operating a psychiatric treatment center without a license. <laughs> Dr. Leonard McCoy. Uh, Jed, uh, we've got a problem with one of the lots in sick bay. It's dim, Jed. <laughs> oh, what do you expect? I'm a doctor, damn it, not an actor. <laughs> Next, Captain Spock. <laughs> this, is, this is a visual that we have. And now, the token Oriental and the token Slav, the commanders Sulu and Chekhov. No, no, you're not going to do this. I am not going to do this. No, no, they hurt me. They always hurt me. You know? <laughs> Lieutenant Savic and Dr. David Marcus. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Aren't they a cute couple? <laughs> Engineering Captain Scott. Captain McLean, I can't take much more of this. <laughs> the drinking scene is during the show, not before. <laughs> Vulcan Ambassador Sarek and her venerableness Ta-da! <laughs> Klingon Commander Krug and First Officer Maltz. Maltz, be the puppet. <laughs> I think Maltz was the furry one. <laughs> and now, the captain and crew of the USS Grissom. The late captain and crew of the USS Grissom. Um, 
Seven letter word for villain. It fits. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, Spock Pacific. Vulcan walk into this gay Andorian bar. <laughs> and this Tellarite comes up to them and says, <laughs> You've heard this one before. <laughs> anyway, the Tellarite says, Why did you abandon him? No, he says, <laughs> You left my son's body on Genesis. Where is Spock's Katra? Dad! Bones, of course he was dead. Do you think I'd have left Spock on Genesis if he wasn't? Kirk, we must locate his mind. Give me your thoughts. My thoughts? My thoughts? <laughs> Actually, I'm not very pleased with how this whole thing worked out. I mean, you sit and look at it. Carol's gone. Spock's gone. Starfleet's gone and decommissioned the Enterprise. I can't even find my little black book. <laughs> my mind to your mind. Be gentle. <laughs> uh, Jim, Ambassador, about Spock, I think I can help you out there in my heart. I believe I know who Spock is. We all do, Doctor. It's a far, far better thing that I do. Far better resting place to which I go. That is entirely dependent upon your point of view, Commander. I think you've had just a little too much to drink, Doctor. Why don't you sit down over here? Will you listen to us, damn it? For the first time in our lives, we agree on something, and we can't even get one of you to listen. It does seem illogical that none of you can take the time to understand what I am saying. Will you keep out of this? You too! Mr. Scott, do you remember earlier this evening when we sang Danny Boy? I and a fine to part harmony you sang on the solo too. Do you think I did that on purpose? I'm a doctor, damn it, not a ventriloquist. We're here looking for the doctor. Doctor who? No, Dr. McCoy. <laughs> there he is. How are we feeling today, 
doctor. Are we ready to go bye-bye? We, we, you see, they understand. Okay. <laughs> we understand. You got the Valium ready, Charlie? <laughs> go back to the time of Spock's death. Give to me the memories of everything that happened on that day. Show me everything, every detail, just as it was. Oh. Oh, my. He really looks awful, doesn't he? Spock! Jim, the ship, out of danger? Yes. I never took the Kobayashi Maru. What do you think of my solution? Frankly, Spock, it sucks. <laughs> I wish it didn't have to end this way. Remember, he I've... really does look awful. <laughs> I was, am, and always will be your friend. He sounds awful, too. <laughs> I wouldn't go without saying goodbye. Bye. Bye. Admiral, you have approximately 3.72 seconds to prevent these gentlemen from removing me permanently. Damn it, you pointed at Ian Vulcan. I want you removed permanently. <laughs> Come along, Doctor. Boy, you sure could pick him, Bush. My Spock. Spock. Forgive me, Admiral. I had no idea there was nothing there. <laughs> You don't believe that Spock is dead. I don't believe that Spock is dead. You want to bring his body back. I want to bring his body back. Take the ship and go to Genesis. Take the ship <laughs> They'll kick my ass. <laughs> Morrow, Kirk here. I don't believe that Spock is dead. I don't believe that Spock is dead. I want to bring his body back. I want to bring his body back. I'll take the ship and go to Genesis. He'll kick your ass. I thought as much, sir. Thank you. Well, I know. What's the word? Gentlemen, the word is no. So, of course, we're going anyway. <laughs> because I don't believe that Spock is dead. I don't believe that Spock is dead. I don't believe that Spock is dead. I don't believe that McCoy is here. Bones, where's Bones? Oh, a couple of men in white coats came a few moments ago and took him away. Well. We can't very well hijack the Enterprise, outrun the fastest ship in Starfleet, and go halfway across the galaxy to some forbidden planet without the Doctor. <laughs> Sulu, check on. Go find McCoy. Scotty and I will go take care of the ship. You just make sure the Doctor's with us when we leave. And Uhura. What happened to Uhura? And that yeoman, what's her name? And that bald navigator from the last <laughs> I'm not sure the doctor's been with us since the last film. <laughs> I don't like this, Sulu. I don't like it when the Admiral leaves us alone. I want to stay with him. He never gets hurt.
This reminds me of a story of this Vulcan, this Klingon, and this human scum who walk into this gay Andorian bar. <laughs> and this Tellarite walks up to them and says, Sir, we're receiving a transmission. No, no, you fool. He says, I've got this disease. No, no, sir, we're really receiving a transmission. It's from the USS Grissom. It's our spy. Excellent. Everyone, put on your disguises. <laughs> Let me speak to her, soldier. Ah, Lieutenant Sobek, have you had any difficulty on your mission? None, my liege. These simpering humans don't find it the least bit odd that I'm the only half Vulcan, half Klingon in Starfleet. Except <laughs> perhaps that your Klingon half tends to make you a bit more volatile than a normal Vulcan. Oh, white. It's made my work in acquiring the Genesis data much more entertaining. Then you have it. <laughs> of course. You'll find it quite useful. You've read it? Yes, my liege. Unfortunate. Understood. You realize now you'll be forced to spend the rest of this movie stranded with that wimpy human scientist on a planet that's about to be blown to a zillion cosmic bits? Hey, Spike, like who are you talking to, man? <laughs> you condemn me to a fate worse than death. <laughs> Hey, Spike, my man, like, we're at Genesis, and, like, Captain Esteban says we got life on the dirt ball. Can you believe it? Yeah, we got cute little bunny rabbits and tweety birds, and natural stuff like slugs and granola. <laughs> and he wants us to go down and look at this shit, man. Well, I say, like, no way, no way, because I'm not in the personal danger. <laughs> Spike, this has got, like, really bad vibes. I mean, like, like Genesis and just like these really heavy vibrations from, like, a bad proto-matter, a real self-destructive trip, don't you know? This is not in my contract, Spike. I don't do this hero jive. <laughs> the name is Savik. It's Vulcan, begins in an S, and ends in a K. Anything is say like Spike. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lieutenant to you. Ah, oh, Lieutenant Savik. Has Dr. Marcus told you about the exciting discoveries of life on Genesis? Yes, slugs and granola. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Captain, it's all quite fascinating. We were just on our way down. Oh, Spike, my man, like you betray me, like cut me to the bone. Oh, and he's a psychic, too. <laughs> now, Lieutenant Savick, take good care of Dr. Marcus down on the planet. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> hey, like what you doing with this knife, man? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is what it's all about. A lovely cruise, brand new ship, beautiful planet in our view screens. This is what a commander craves. A nice, easy mission and a brand new Federation starship in our sights. I think we'd better contact Starfleet and let them know about the life we found on Genesis. Ensign? Sir, the USS Grissom is contacting Starfleet about slugs and granola on Genesis. <laughs> Captain, we're being jammed. Well, who's jamming us? That invisible Klingon ship that's left behind in the last scene. Whoa, shit. <laughs> we are phaser looking phasers lot on that wimpy human crew. We've got to hear the scream if we don't hear the scream. How we gonna make our dreams come true? We are panicking and running fast. The Klingon ship is on our... <laughs> Sir! The USS Grissom is... Destroyed. Destroyed. Destroyed? You mean to tell me we scored a direct hit on a Federation star cruiser and destroyed her? A lucky shot? <laughs> We've never been able to destroy a Federation starship before. If we destroy one now, that means Enterprise will come. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> Did you see that, Sulu? Did you see that? That was the 
cool person. Just like the mind. Ooh. <laughs> starting to talk about serious pain here, Sulu. <laughs> What he's getting us into? Check off the only chance we're gonna have to rescue the doctor is during scene changes. Now come on! Oh. Hey, get out of the way, Tiny. Don't call me Tiny. Hey, what are you two doing here anyway? This is a restricted area. Can't you see we're trying to put on a show here? This actor, this director, and this stuntman going to a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> Some engineer. What? Legend says, hey. You guys are Starfleet officers, aren't you? No, no, he says, I got this disease. <laughs> hey, you're breaking up the doctor. This is science fiction. This isn't science fiction. This is Star Trek. <laughs> oh, this is great. Are we going to have an adventure? Sure, an adventure. All sorts of adventure. You haven't seen anything yet. Great, what do I do? Right here. And the moment we see any adventure at all, we'll let you know. Hey. <laughs> How's this? Good, good. You're doing just fine. <laughs> Sometimes I just hate myself. <laughs> wow, a real adventure. This is fantastic. <laughs> but not often. <laughs> Must be granola. I don't know about this crew. I don't know about this either. No, these disguises. What is it now, Maltz? These disguises. I can't help feeling like they're, well, a little silly. And awfully transparent. Not transparent. Subtle. We must employ these disguises in order to maintain galactic dominance. Must look different in every movie to keep the humans off balance. <laughs> Your glorious Klingon Empire expended thousands of loyal citizens bending all these stupid little prongs backwards just so your disguise will stay on right side up. Now, I don't want to hear another word from you about the quality of our glorious Klingon equipment. Yes, my liege. Now, as to that twinkie of a human in the company of our noble spy. They've been wandering around in circles ever since they picked up that Vulcan child. What Vulcan child? The one that's grown three feet in the last two hours. A Vulcan child with three feet? I don't know what to make of it. Make nothing of it now. Here they come. Everyone, hide. Okay, Spock. Repeat it back to me, just the way I taught you. Delta Y at pi. For calculating. Integrate at eight. To L F no. Square of chi plus I. Quite fascinating. So you see. <laughs> Thoroughly logical. logical. Hey, Spike, like, what you doing, man? Just teaching Spock an old Vulcan nursery rhyme that contains all the rudiments of intelligence even the most feeble-minded child must learn. But, like, I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ah, oh, Spike, it's like such a total, such a total downer that the Grissom blew up. I know. This place is a pit. Well, like, at least we won't be down here very long. Why not? Because, like, there won't be a down here very long. <laughs> Wait a minute, Marcus. I think it's time for a little honesty here and a lot of plot exposition. <laughs> 
Is what you said earlier true? You actually used protomatter, the most volatile, uncontrollable substance in the known universe, to create a totally unstable planet that's going to undergo more and more severe cataclysms until it blows itself to pieces? <laughs> you stranded us on a dust bowl that can't stand up to the strain of its own existence? You wouldn't do something that irresponsible, that dumb? For sure. <laughs> the subject of honesty. I've got a little secret I would like to let you in on. What's that? I think it's piano. <laughs> I think it's Pond Bar. No, 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 it's definitely piano. No, look at Sam. I think he's going into the Vulcan Like, I don't even know Go to the springtime. <laughs> Hey, Spike, like, what happened, man? <laughs> a 15-second pawn far. <laughs> the ultimate cookie. <laughs> and that gang of the horde, man. <laughs> Dr. Long Marcus, to. at long last. Oh, wow. Got you, Marx. <laughs> <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. A pop brand human scientist. A Vulcan child with... Three feet. <laughs> ah, and a Starfleet fleet officer who is half Klingon and half Norwegian. <laughs> Take them. Sulu should have been back hours ago. I should have known something like this was going to happen. I mean, look at where we are. This entire plot is just too damn simple. Well, How's sir, it going? This should do it. I've got all the ship systems rewired through the piano now. <laughs> we ought to be able to run the big premiere, so we'll be ready for a test in just a few minutes. Good job, Scotty. <laughs> Chekhov, Sulu, what happened? Did everything go all right? What took so well, long? there was, was a problem, and, 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 and we had to, uh... All right. On second thought, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Take your posts, gentlemen. Bones, are we awake? We're not sure. <laughs> are we in a straight jacket? Yes, we are. Then we're awake. <laughs> However, we are highly confused. <laughs> Don't worry, Bones. Everything is going to be okay now. That's what you said at the end of the last movie. <laughs> Trust me. So, we're ready for test now. Hit it, Mr. Scott. Invisible Klingon cruiser. <laughs> Where? Right there on the forward screen. <laughs> there she is, all right. Get her, Mr. Sulu. We are phaser locking, phasers locked on a ship that we can't see. We must have a scheme. If you don't have a scheme, how are we 
gonna finish Star Trek 3. We are moving in to take them out, like a giant sitting dog. Sonny, what are you doing? Not bloody much, Captain. That last shot knocked the piano right out of tune. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it, sir. This sort of thing takes tune and torques I just don't have. <laughs> can you fix it, Scotty? Not poor Baldwin. <laughs> Hang on to closing. Me alone, sir, no. How about if Mr. Spock were only here? Allow me, Mr. Spock. Bones? Here they come. Oh, this is just great. We all end up getting blown to pieces smaller than dust. That's called disintegration. I don't know about the rest of you, but I was planning on having a career in Starfleet. It's dead, Jim. Oh, really? Doctor. They're I'm here. <laughs> Admiral Kirk, this is the Klingon commander. He won't recognize me. That's why I carry this. <laughs> Krug! Not effective. <laughs> I've waited for this all my career, Kirk. Just to have you in my sights. At my mercy. Spare me. Perhaps. But only if you turn over to me all data pertaining to the project Genesis. <laughs> We've been through all this before. And you can't do nothing with those stupid codes this time, monkey boy. This is one of your ships. <laughs> oh, damn. And just to show you that we're telling the truth, Admiral, we will now assassinate one of the three captives we have on the Genesis planet. Three? Uh, David? David. Sonic? Spot? Younger than springtime! Ah! Oh, well, he's in Paul and Paul, too! Or was. <laughs> kill one. Oh, man, like, why don't you just kill Spock? I mean, like, he's already dead. I mean, like, who needs an artichoke with a sex drive? <laughs> oh, Savick! Call me Spike! <laughs> Admiral, David is dead. Ah! You cling on, you killed my bastard! <laughs> You have two minutes to turn over the Genesis data to me. I'll be waiting. Well, that's it. We blow the ship. What? what? Jim, you can't just destroy this dream, this legend, this... Bones, we have no alternatives. There are always possibilities. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Admiral. A far more logical solution would be to switch places with the Klingons. Take their ship while they take ours. Send me down to the transporter room, Admiral. I'll throw in a sonic hand grenade just as they're materializing. They'll never know what hit them. Admiral, I can suspend them in transport. I'll lock them in the piano. <laughs> we can put creatures in their bodies. <laughs> them do things. How about tell jokes? <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, the inherent flaw with all of these suggestions is that I didn't think of any of them. <laughs> Therefore, they're not valid. We blow the ship. Uh, excuse me, uh, do you mind if I move to the closet on the Klingon bridge? <laughs> Let's go. So long, boss.
nothing here. Just an old piano. Piano? Let me hear it. No! <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, I think they're playing bridge, though. <laughs> What's with Spock? He's the dummy. <laughs> Three clubs. Three hearts. Four diamonds. Five phasers. <laughs> no bid. <laughs> Disarm them. Spock! No, Spock! Just take their weapons! No more than springtime! Admiral Kirk, head up the bid a little more. Scotty, take the prisoners. Go take over the Klingon ship. I see. I'll be up in a few minutes. <laughs> I've got a lot to learn. Learn, Kirk. Hate is a great thing, a great advantage. I killed your son, ruined your career, destroyed your ship. I know you hate me for these things. But do you use that hatred? No. You just stand there and let me lecture you as if you were some simpering female. <laughs> <laughs> A Klingon would never do that. You have been taught from a very early age. Carefully, carefully taught. You've got to be taught to hate and sneer. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to draw your blade on people whose ears are oddly made and people whose skin's a different shade. You've got to be carefully taught. <laughs> Admiral, you're a fast learner. Imbe, ime, uppe, altsme. I don't touch that one. You're gonna blow us all sky high. Don't you know you never touch the black keys? <laughs> Mr. Scott, this is a Klingon piano. All the keys are black. Gay and doing <laughs> And this Tellerite walked up to them. He says, Admiral, I don't know about this Vulcan hocus pocus. Do you think they can put Spock's mind back in his body? I don't know, Sulu. But we're going to have to trust them. After all, it was a Vulcan that got us into this in the first place. Cheap humor, Vulcan mysticism, and a Klingon ship. Oh, mm. Klingons. Speaking of Klingons, what did we do with the malts, gentlemen? <laughs> we locked him in the closet. <laughs> with Mr. Adventure? <laughs> do you think he's getting enough adventure now? <laughs> The ceremony begins. <laughs> Kirk, do you understand what is going to happen here? I'm not sure. 
Spock's body has been without guidance for a very long time. Even after the transfer, he may not be completely whole. He may have forgotten everything of his past life. He may very well not be the Spock you thought you knew. But if he isn't Spock, who will he be? Fascinating. Oh, damn it, Jim, you got us in the wrong bodies. <laughs> Ambassador Sarek, it's the very Spock I thought I knew that I gave everything to save. If what you say is true, if he doesn't even remember my name, then you will have gained nothing. Savik, you don't look anything like her. <laughs> all of you. I remember all of you. Jim, the ship. Out of danger? The ship? <laughs> I can't believe we let them talk us into this. What kind of fool do they think I am? I'm a hero. I can get us out of this. Check off. Front and center. I want to see a copy of that script. There's got to be some mistake here. No, sir. Here it is, right at the end of that too. Kirk blows up the Enterprise. <laughs> Where's Spock? This is all his fault. <laughs> if he hadn't died, none of this ever would have happened. Where is that Vulcan? I'm going to kill him. Thank you. 
Uh, uh, guys? <laughs> guys, can I, can I, can I come out of the closet now? Uh, guys? Oh, guys? Thank <laughs> you.